<laughs> How did you not give up? I think I'm basically quite, quite a uh, you know, disciplined person. Like I run a lot, you know, rain, snow, hailstorm. I should go for my run. <laughs> yeah, definitely very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm here with um, Gilbert Go, a Singaporean activist who founded Love Aid. Now, if you don't already know, Love Aid is a privately funded humanitarian organization founded by Gilbert many years ago. So last December, yeah. Gilbert did a post on your Instagram, right? Appealing for funds amongst your yeah. friends on your social media. Um, your initial target, Gilbert, was to raise $10,000 for Palestinian Ooh. and Syrian refugees in Lebanon. And yeah. as of three days ago, um, your target had reached a whopping $1.1 million in donation. Yeah. So for That's those right. who have just joined us, um, you can see that Love Aid has really resonated with the thousands of ordinary Singaporeans, regardless of race, yeah. regardless of religion, who have come forward mm. with an outpouring of support for this cause. Love Aid has over 20,000 followers on Instagram and me being one of them. And we are all fixated on your journey, Gilbert, as a Singaporean who left our comfortable shores and who headed mm. for the Middle East. Now, I'm just going to list down mm. some of the things that you've been doing. You have shared with us the realities of the refugee camps in Lebanon, about the living conditions yeah. of the refugees, some of whom have been there for decades. Um, we mm -hmm. see you reaching out to and dispersing funds um, mm. to many different organizations in the camps, be it kindergartens, mm. orphans, be it refugees with cancer, be it refugees with disabilities, you gathered pet mm. food, providing fuel for the cold winter. And then mm. moving to Cairo, you worked with the local NGO there to send tents, mm. blankets and food parcels for those trapped mm. in Gaza. And then earlier this year, you began to work with the local NGO International Relief Organization Initially right. to help dispatch aid to Rafah, where there were close to 1 million trapped Palestinians. And mm. from there, the funds from Love Aid started to be used for setting up and maintaining, maintaining central kitchens in different parts of Gaza. Mm. Is that right? So I'd yeah. like to start this interview, Gilbert, is by asking you to introduce yourself. Mm. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you were doing in Singapore before all this. Oh, I'm a social worker, right? Helping the homeless, the elderly. So we visit them, you know, weekly to give food and some small cash. When wow. like, yeah, I was actually working in a charity uh, company, but uh -huh. somehow I don't think I could do much, you know. We're still under an umbrella, so I came out, started on my own. You know, it was difficult. No, there was no funds, no one knows about me. Mm -hmm. So nobody gives me a dollar. You know? mm -hmm. So there was a call to go to Middle East. Right, so right. I, I went, I, I wanted to, you know, take a look. So I went for a conference there, you know, set up by a refugee uh, organization. So I went and I found out if we can do something. You know? The only thing is uh, I'm the only Singaporean. So each trip lasts one to two months. Wow. So I'm there like three, four months a year. Uh, every winter I've been Lebanon now giving out clothes, blankets, you know, food to uh, Palestinians or Syrian refugees. So I begin to go for the next seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. I go during Ramadan and during winter eight. Mm -hmm. So I went, uh, you know, there wasn't much recognition. Nobody knows me. And nobody wants to go. I guess it's Lebanon, you know. Yeah. It's like, wow, very uh, war-torn country. So I went, I, I keep going, you know. People there say, hey, you're the only guy, you know, who keeps coming back. Say, mm -hmm. not many NGOs, you know, comes back and keeps coming back. So I was there like 10, 12 times. Before G Gaza, what happens? When it happens, I was still in Beirut. Mm -hmm. Helping out the refugees in uh, refugee camps there. Is this from the funds gathered in Singapore? Yeah, most of them are gathered in Singapore. But I also must state here to viewers that we are not registered. You know? yeah. We are unregistered NGO. Yes. Just to state the, the truth. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that you were there in December when the crisis was already ongoing, I'm sure that your journey must have been full of challenges and real risks 
yeah. that you, yeah. you have faced? For example, when you were there in Lebanon, could you hear bombings or reverberations of the oh, attacks? Oh yeah, yeah. The there was a, yeah, there was a bombing in Beirut. I think a Hamas uh, commander was killed, and the bombing actually I heard was three, five kilometers away. I couldn't hear it. But you can feel the tension no, among the people who are talking about it. Considering how risky and perilous your efforts come with, what does your family or your loved ones here in Singapore say to you? Oh, I only have a daughter. I'm divorced, so she's uh, living in Sydney. So of course, she give up, uh, give up trying to <laughs> stop me. Because I, I couldn't be stopped. <laughs> I keep coming you know, on my own, I come. Right. No money, I can't. But I think it's a commitment, a dedication to the refugees in Lebanon and now in Gaza. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we are here for you, you know. Even through the storm, right, I'll be here. I assure the NGO here, right. We'll be here, right, don't worry. Singaporeans are behind you, right. We have donated 1.1 million and yeah. all the money will be given to you. Right, I won't take one cent. Right, only and to we eat. We are behind too. you, Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But it's, uh, I think you know, it's intense pressure. Right, a lot of things can go wrong here, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, leave work, you know, sometimes, most importantly, I feel sometimes money can't get in. The bombs destroy all the banks in Gaza. So to get money in, it's a hassle. But I won't tell you how we get the money in, but it's extremely difficult. Rest assured. Then we have nine workers that are killed, I think you know in the news. Yep. Right, so that is extremely difficult to stomach. Until now, I still uh, feel emotional thinking about how uh, workers got killed, you know, working just to cook for their own people. What kept you I, going? So, all this you have to be emotionally strong, to be resilient. You know? When there's an issue, when there's a problem, you don't let it, you know, take control of you. You have to think of a way out. I think being Singaporean is difficult. We're in the same environment, you know, very cosy. And everything's very efficient. Yep. Everything is efficient. You get it here, pa pa pa, money come out. Because <laughs> so, I'm alone, so you do feel lonely. Yeah, so that part, who knows? Nobody knows. When I lay my feet to sleep alone, you know, have to have the capacity, you know, the stomach for this. Like, can you be on your own for one whole month? Like, this is stuff that people have to ask themselves you know, if they do humanitarian work. But over here, anything, everything can go wrong. So you have to be very uh, totally in control, to be very positive. You know, I run daily to keep fit, also to keep myself you know, uh, emotionally strong. So I read a lot. When there's time, I read, you know, I want to keep myself positive, you know. You yeah. were scheduled, you scheduled your trip to to end in January, if I'm not wrong. You were supposed to come back yeah. in January. What made yeah. you stay? Yeah. And you're still there. Was, what made you stay? I was supposed to come back after five days in uh, Cairo. I said, hey, okay, la, we have 30, 50,000 back. But wow, first day, 30,000, third day, 100,000. Yes. Within uh, a month or, or about six, seven weeks, we have uh, half a million. Mm -hmm. So the funds just pour, it's, it's amazing. La. I never expect this. It is amazing, to, to, yes. To, yes, I never expect this. I keep changing my etiquette. Give you the timeline. So from what I gathered, December, your target was 10K. 12th of yeah. January, you reach 150k. 17th of January, yeah. five days later, was 190k. 21st yeah. of January is 245k. 25th of yeah. January is 300k. And 3rd yeah, of March is 1 like million. That. Yeah, I think yes. you keep record so better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's overwhelming just, support from Singaporeans. Overwhelming. I'm um, just a tiny, you know, more like one man show, you know. So it's amazing lah. I, I do not show that it. one person can truly make a difference. Yes, uh, that's the slogan I want to uh, appeal to Singaporeans. We always told, you know, you're no good, you're not good enough, you know, uh, you can't do this, you know. 
But I think I'm telling Singaporeans you know, right now, you can do something. You know, if you commit your whole heart, your whole faith into it, you know, be focused, be committed, be positive. One man can change the world, I believe. But I'm not saying I can change the world. But I think I hope I'm an example, a model to all Singaporeans you know, who keep telling themselves, I, I can't do it. You know, I'm just one person. You know, I'm not good enough. I don't have a degree. You know, I don't have a PhD. Come on. I think I'm not. I can't speak well. I'm not a graduate. But I think I give my whole heart. Like if you want me to go Gaza, I will. If you say, what if I die? I say, I, I die, so it, so be it. So in January yes. this year, you started funneling funds to um, IRO, um, to fund yeah. central kitchens inside of Gaza itself. You have worked with this NGO since. So tell us, how did this relationship with this NGO come about? How did you communicate yeah. with the organization and how often yeah. did you be in touch with them? It was uh, given by someone from Lebanon. He, she knows this particular NGO, IRO. This NGO is Cairo. based in yes. Gaza? It's based in Germany. To... Oh, I see. It's just, yeah, because they are refugees in Germany. But they okay. are Palestinians. And they've been going in and out of Gaza, you know, even before the war in Gaza. So I, and you couldn't speak a word of English. So we translate, you know, use Google Translator to communicate. It's difficult, I'll tell you. Mm. But it's the most difficult communication I have with someone whom I have to work closely with. So someone we use sign language, Google, you know, someone we also like kind of telepathic. Uh. So I tell you, it's uh, mind-boggling, you know, uh, how things can go on, no? right. when both when... of us can't speak the same language. But I think we have the same heartbeat. We wanted to help the Palestinians, because he's the Palestinian. Yeah. Right. So uh, I think this makes it so much easier to overcome all barriers, all language, all religion. No? So tell us yeah. about um, the solar energy project. Yeah, that one was like out of the blue, you know, I was asked to fund this uh, water treatment uh, project in North Gaza. So I said, wow, I think quite expensive. Like. It was quoted as 12,000. But I felt and saw, you know, the news that people are queuing up for water. And some of the water are not purified. This is like tap water, but not uh, sanitized, not purified. So it's dangerous, not filtered, Uh it's not Mm -hmm. clean. You drink and you got a stomach ache, you know. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, go ahead. So I would give 12,000. So I saw, eh, not bad, no? It's actually worth the money. So the next call came is to set up a solar energy power system to power up a hospital. I said, wow, this one quite quite big, <laughs> quite big, quite serious, like, quite expensive. It's 44,000 US, mm. about 65,000 sing. I said, wow, this one, let me think. No? <laughs> but I know it's important. Because the news show that this hospital in the North Gaza, at Kama Atwa Hospital, was closed down. Because they don't have the fuel to power up their generator. So incubator could function on and off. So I said, hey, this one is big, but it's expensive. No? So can you let me think? So I walk around, you know, pace the floor. I think for about an hour there, I say, yeah, I think we go here. No? We have the funds, I check. Yeah? I got the money, you know. <laughs> so I say, go ahead. And wow, it's big, right? Now they are setting up. And once it's up, yeah, the hospital will be functioning. Uh, they can operate. They can set up yeah, incubators. And hopefully, they can move up uh, to the next hospital. Hopefully, it's uh, somewhere, you know, that needs our, our power, you know. I won't tell you where. <laughs> yep. But okay. we are looking at another one, yeah. So tell us about the orphan sponsorship programs because we've been seeing that there are lots of orphans wow, that one, in Gaza. Yeah, a lot where of, are uh, these orphans. orphans being relocated yeah. to? What kind of shelter are they living in and what activities have you planned? Are being planned? Yeah, there are 17,000 orphans right in Gaza right now. I think we only handle 
like one or two percent. Like mm-hmm. We can only sponsor 400. Mm-hmm. But the outpouring of support is also amazing. Uh. I actually took a step of faith. You know, I look at the orphans and say, wow, well, they need help now. Mm-hmm. Like people are all over the, the street. And some are without parents, without any sibling, no. I don't know how it will turn out, you know. There's no blueprint, you know. We don't really uh, have like, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, something that you have can follow. No, but wow, it turned out well. No? They could gather them together, but I think they are sheltering in a UN compound. Okay. So these orphans are parked with an uncle or aunt. Right, so we say hey, we give this uh, relative some money. So they have clothes, you know, uh, food, education. So I hope we can, you know, sponsor more. Continue to Maybe, sponsor more orphans. Yeah, 600, 700, you know. But it's not cheap. One orphan is 60 US. So we are looking at like 500 orphans is 30,000 US for one month, you know. It's a one year program. But I think they are confident now. We have a lot of support for this uh, offense program. Things here, I must uh, tell Singaporeans, it's not clear, no? it's very murky, very uncertain. So you have to live with the uh, uncertainty, you know, that if you go into this, I don't know how it will turn out. No? It could it's not, not be well. At all. It's not textbook, yeah. It's not one plus one equal two. It's not one plus one equal five. <laughs> so I think, for Singaporeans, we are too certain, you know. We want certainty. I give you 10,000, you must give me back 10,000 world, no? and you must tell me how, how is it going to be spent. Yep. So I think it's not like this year. No? Yeah, I don't know how I survive, <laughs> but I probably driven by uh, compassion, maybe a humanitarian heart to say things get better in Gaza. So I took risks. Uh, I, I want to fail, I dare to fail, no. I said if I fail, never mind. Right, I have uh, support of Singaporeans. If I fail, I'll lose some money. But if it succeeds, wow, well, oh, it helps a lot of people. It spurs me on when yeah. I see the video, I cry. Mm-hmm. I cry. They say, sorry, they say, thank you, Singaporeans. Wow. It's worth it. Right, thank you, Singaporeans. It's worth it. So amongst all the heartbreaking conditions, do you see a ray of hope for Palestinians? Well, we need a ceasefire, really, badly. Because you can have airdrop, sea drop, you know, trucks yep. going in, but it's not enough. Thank you, Gilbert, for spending time with uh, me. Thank you so much. You are an inspiration to all of us. <laughs> you make us proud to be Singaporean and we will keep on thank supporting you. you. Um, yeah, and thanks. to viewers, if you haven't already, do follow Gilbert on his Instagram at love8sg where he gives us regular updates on all that Thank is you. happening. Thank you so much, Gilbert, Thank and God bless. Thank you, Mao. Yeah. Yeah.